Hello everyone. This video is about vocabulary. In particular, I'm going to give you some ways in which you can expand it. Language is made of different parts and vocabulary plays a huge role in our ability to speak fluently. So in this video, we are going to take a look at some very simple adjectives like happy, tired, and so on. And I'm going to give you alternative ways in which you can express those same concepts with lots of different terms, especially if you want to emphasize dead concepts. So instead of saying very sad, very happy, and so on and so forth, so let's get started. Stop saying very happy. Happy is really common word in English and of course there is nothing wrong with using it. But sometimes it can sound a bit dull or overused. So instead of saying I'm very happy, you could say I'm thrilled, aesthetic, delighted overjoyed, elated, or you could use some idioms like over the moon, on cloud nine, in seventh heaven, on top of the world, floating on air. Let's take a look at some examples. Sarah was thrilled to start her new job. He was over the moon about going on vacation. John was delighted with his new house. Stop saying very sad. Just like happy, sad can sound a bit too dull, especially if you are trying to impress your teacher or you are writing an essay and your vocabulary needs to be giving something more. So instead of saying very sad, you could use these. Miserable devastated, heartbroken, downhearted, dejected, disappointed, low-spirited, crestfallen, desolate, melancholy. For example, he was heartbroken when his partner left him. She looked dejected when they told her she didn't get the job. In this, this, dejected means disappointed, that is, unhappy about something that didn't go as you had hoped. I was living a miserable life, that means extremely sad. Miserable, of course, each one of these alternatives I'm giving you has a certain noun meaning a precise context in which it can be used. I will tell you some of them, but in general, there are things that you will learn with experience. So be careful not to use them in every situation. Stop saying very good. We use the word good so much and of course we need it. But sometimes it can be too simple in its place. If we want to say very good, we could say amazing, awesome, wonderful, magnificent, fantastic, fabulous, splendid, exceptional, exceptional, excellent, marvelous. Mar they are pretty much interchangeable. They can all be applied to so many contexts. For example, I feel amazing. I read a wonderful book. The movie I watched yesterday was exceptional. You look splendid. Stop saying very bad. Just like very good can sound dull, so does its contrary very bad. Instead of saying very bad, we could say awful. Terrible, horrible, dreadful. For example, this room smells awful. It smells really, really bad. I have a terrible headache.
That was a dreadful experience. It means it was extremely bad and unpleasant experience. Stop saying very tired. Tired is an other adjective that can be sometimes overused. Again, the problem is not the adjective itself. It's just that we don't want to be too repetitive. When we are speaking, and especially we are writing. So instead of saying very tired, you could say exhausted, worn out, fatigued, sleepy, burnt out, burnt out, spent, weary. The correct pronunciation is weary. Be careful, don't forget that pronunciation is another very important aspect of communication. And you could also say that you are fed up. When you are tired of something, sick of, bored, with or bored by. Let's make some examples. I have worked all night. I'm exhausted. I'm feeling sleepy. I better go. I'm sick of your disrespectful behavior. Stop saying very beautiful. Sometimes we just need the word beautiful to express how much we appreciate someone or something. But if we want to take it a step further instead of saying very beautiful, we could say gorgeous, stunning, delightful, ravishing, handsome, magnificent, bewitching, charming, exquisite, prepossessing. Now some of these are more formal than others like prepossessing and ravishing. By the way, prepossessing is not just used to indicate beauty. It could also mean interesting or impressive. Also, some of these words are used in different contents. For example, handsome is used just for men. Some examples, you look stunning in that dress. What a delightful evening. Stop saying very ugly. Ugly is another basic word that we could replace with hideous, grotesque. For example, instead of saying that sweater is very ugly, you could say that sweater is hideous. She was accused of displaying grotesque behavior. Of course, these words can sound very disrespectful if you use them to describe a person. So please don't do that. Stop saying very little. That little is an indispensable adjective. We cannot do without it. But if we are describing something and you want to use another term to emphasize how little something is, Instead of saying very little or very small, you could say teeny, minuscule, minute. This is not minute, this is minute, dainty, we, teeny, fancy. For example, the show was a wee bit tedious. The documentary showed an eye operation in minute detail. If we are talking about duration, we can also use brief, fleeting, short-lived, momentary. Stop saying very big. Just like little, big can be a bit dull. As an adjective, again, if you are describing something, and you want to expand your vocabulary. Instead of saying very big, you could say huge, enormous, gigantic, extensive, monumental, voluminous, spacious, colossal, considerable, 
constantial, sizable. All right, everyone. That was it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it, share it with your friends, and hit the subscribe button on my channel.